So through your vantage point on that hiring committee, what specific advice do you have for people who are looking to get hired into an MLOps role? What are the most important skills? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so part of what I've done at MailChimp is I've helped to design and develop um, our interview process for some of our um, data engineering roles and also our MLOps roles. And also I contribute, as you mentioned, to the Global um, Engineering Hiring Committee for MailChimp, especially uh, the focus on uh, values and culture. And that's huge. Uh, we really care about culture ad as opposed to culture fit. Um, we want people who it's not just like they're cool to work with, but also they will kind of continue to uphold the um, the principles of diversity, equity and inclusion. Because it, honestly, that, that's been a really special part of working at MailChimp. Uh, it's first off, I've never seen so many female engineers under one roof mm -hmm. as I. So it's uh, MailChimp is an Atlanta based company. Um, when I was working in Bay Area startups and comp and and companies like, um, I did not see that many female engineers on, under the same roof. And on my team alone, we have at least four female ML ops engineers, which is great. And my manager is female too, but it's been so great. And also too, for example, um, in the Bay area, you just don't see that cultural and ethnic diversity that we also see at MailChimp, which is really wonderful. Like I like working with people who look like everyday people that I would interact with. It's fantastic. Uh, people with different um, different abilities, different sort of perspectives and values, but all around these this idea of you're adding something. So that's a huge, huge part of what we care about. So now to get into the actual specific parts of the interviews. Um, so a couple tips of what I've seen, especially for engineers or data scientists. Uh, first tip is uh, know yourself. So for example, I ramble when I get very nervous, which means I do really well with bullet points. Bullet points are my friend. And more importantly, having those stories framed out ahead of time. We see some engineers who they get really, really stuck in the details of like the technical projects they worked on. And then they miss out on the ability to talk about, first off, what was the innovation that you brought to that project? Right. Right. What was the leadership that you engaged in? What were some issues that you proactively identified and then went after it? You know, there's a lot of key values that we're that we look for. And I think sometimes engineers they get so focused on the like, okay, I'm gonna talk about this really, really cool project I did where I implemented this microservice and all this other stuff. It's like, no, no, you're missing out on the the human element on the ability to like display the fact that uh first off, you're gonna be in the trenches with us. You're going to be um delivering software. We can rely on you. So I'd say that's the first one is people should know themselves. Um they, the second part should be like, understand what values, what are, what are some elements that you are sort of displaying in your storytelling? Um, and I would say the, the third part is humility. So we've, we've had some candidates where we asked them, so like, what was the time that you really screwed up? How did, and you got negative feedback. How did you handle those? And they'll say like, oh, we never got, mm, that didn't happen. We, we never screwed up. We've, we've never gotten negative feedback. You know, you know, what that says to me is actually not that first off, um, I could believe and I could believe that for some candidates, but it tells me two things. One, you're either lying um, or two, in some cases, it's OK. So you've never been put in a position where you had to take ownership of something. Right. You've never been in a position where you had to be accountable for your results. So if we put you and right now we're building a lot of stuff like playing in the air, right? We're building a plane as we fly it. So how can we know that if we handle a crucial piece or element of a project that's a little bit ambiguous, that you'll be able to kind of dig away at that ambiguity and you'll also be able to make a decision in terms of how to proceed with that project. So that accountability piece, and there is this book called um, Extreme Ownership. That's almost an element of what we kind of want is that ownership that a lot of times you do see in um, people with military experience. Mm -hmm. I think my friend Albert um, talked about this as well. Albert Bellamy? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Luke Burroughs too. They're, they're both, you know, former military. They have that experience. And they both talk about extreme ownership. Like ownership is something that I've found a lot of military to have 
that innate understanding of. Um, and I think that's something that some, you know, candidates would probably do well to read up on and to really understand what that means.